Hi, uh, before we begin this tutorial, I recommend you to download the companion code uh, which is bundled along with this video. And in this tutorial, we are going to do three things. Uh, the first one is I'm going to show you a demo of uh, the application that we are going to develop. And second, uh, I'm going to show you how to import an existing Android project into your Eclipse workspace. And third, uh, I'm going to show you how to create uh, user interfaces for Android uh, using uh, the graphical layout editor, which is a part of the ADT. And uh, here I have the application that we are going to develop. It is a very simple application. It has just only one screen. And what you see on the screen is a simple illustration of a traffic signal. It has three lights. The first one is red, the second one is yellow, and the third one is green. And as of now, all the three lights are turned off. You also notice three buttons at the bottom of the screen. The first one is the red button, the second one is the yellow button, and the third one is the green button. And uh, this is a very simple app. Uh, clicking on any of these buttons will uh, light up the appropriate uh, light on the signal. So when I click on red, you see the red light gets uh, turned on. And when I click on yellow, the yellow light gets turned on. And clicking on green will turn on the green light. So this is a very simple tutorial. but uh, we'll be learning a lot of important concepts which we'll be using throughout Android uh, development. And now uh, you should be having a pretty good idea about the project that we are going to develop. Next I'm going to show you how to import the companion code which we will be using as a starting point for this project. Uh, the companion code contains all the necessary images uh, which will help us get started. In order to import the project, click on the file menu and click on import. And now you get a nice little import dialog. And under the Android category, select existing Android code into workspace and click on next. You should know the path where you have downloaded your companion code. I have mine on my desktop, so I'm going to click on browse and since it is on my desktop already I'm going to select traffic lights and I'm going to click on open so Eclipse has identified the project and it is already selected here now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select this copy projects into workspace option once you've selected this option click on finish and now you can see that the project has been imported to our workspace when you click on this little arrow button, you can see the entire project structure. This is the project structure for every Android project. And uh, we will be going through this in detail, uh, but not now. Uh, I'll be talking only about the things that uh, matter the most at this point of time. The first thing that uh, interests us is the source folder. So if you have anything in Java if you want to write any code in Java it goes into the source folder so all your Java code goes directly into the source folder and uh, the next folder we are interested in, in is the resource folder the resource folder contains lots of uh, resources like uh, sound image uh, user interface layouts it can also contain other resources like strings so this is the folder that we will be exploring uh, currently. When I click on this resource folder, you can see a lot of uh, folders named uh, drawable with different suffixes. So uh, all the images will go into the drawable folders. We have different folders. That's because Android runs on devices with different form factors. For instance, there are uh, really low-end and cheap Android mobiles which have a smaller screen size and then on the other end you have uh, tablets which have really high resolutions. So it is necessary to have images uh, of the appropriate sizes. For example, for a smaller and a low-end device with a smaller screen, uh, it would be nice to have a smaller image. but 
when you run it on a full HD uh, tablet, it would be appropriate to have a high density, high quality image. Now I'm going to expand one of these folders and we're going to take a look into the contents of that folder. I'm going to expand this drawable XHDBI folder. And here we have a set of images. Uh, the first one I would like to show you is the light of uh, image. So this image uh, represents a light. It could be red, yellow or green. It represents the state when the light is turned off. And similarly we have images for the on state such as uh, the red button when it is on. This uh, is what it would look like and when the yellow light is on it will look like this and when the green light is on it will look like this. So these are the images that we will be using in this uh, project. We can also explore the other uh, drawable folders and uh, the rest of the folders will contain smaller versions of the images that were uh, showcased now. And uh, besides the drawable folder the next folder uh, that might interest us is the layout folder and this is the folder where all the user interface layouts of your Android project goes in. Um, layouts are uh, XML documents that describe uh, the structure of your user interface. I'm going to double click on the traffic lights.xml. This is the layout for our project and what you see here is uh, the graphical layout editor. I'm going to minimize the package explorer to have a better look at the graphical layout editor. On the left side of the layout editor, you can see the palette. The palette contains native Android uh, components which are grouped into various categories. You can drag these components onto the screen to build your user interface. And as of now, the graphical layout editor is missing one important component that is the outline panel. I'm going to click on window, show view, and I'm going to click on outline. So this is a very helpful panel. You'll see how we are going to use it. So this outline plan panel actually shows you the uh, structure of your user interface layout. And that structure typically reflects the structure of the XML document. And below oh, the outline, uh, at, at the bottom of the outline panel, you can see the properties window where uh, there are a lot of uh, properties that are related to the component that is currently selected. Now let's go ahead and create the user interface for our application. So as you might remember from the demo uh, of the application we are going to develop, our application had uh, three traffic lights, the red, yellow, and the green light. And these three uh, were just images. They are just uh, images. So we need to find the appropriate component that could display images in Android. So I'm now I'm going to go to images and media and image view. I'm going to select image view because image view is the component that is used to display images in Android. So we are going to create the traffic light first. I'm going to drag this image view onto the screen. So as you might see, uh, when I drag this image view along the screen, you could see uh, these dotted guides. These guides actually help you a lot when placing a component. Uh, we're going to place the yellow light at first. So once I release my mouse, here you get this resource chooser dialog where you can select a resource. So since we are going to select a project resource, uh, a resource that we have bundled along with this uh, project, I'm going to stick with uh, the project resources and first we'll choose the yellow light. I'm going to click OK. So there it is. Now we have our yellow light and now we are going to drag another image view onto the screen uh, and we'll, we'll assign the red light onto it. I'm going to place the red light above the yellow light. I'm going to release my mouse here and I'm going to choose the yellow. Sorry, the red uh, light. 
okay we need it just above the yellow light so I'm going to drag it down perfect and now the green light we need to place the green light at below the yellow light so the green light okay now we are done with the traffic lights and uh, this is very important this is a very important thing you have to remember if you want to reference any UI view in your Java code or your XML you need to give it an ID that, that is really important if you want to reference uh, a view in your Java code or if you want to reference the view from your XML you definitely have to give it an ID when you're using this layout editor the layout editor automatically assigns ID to these uh, UI components so when I click on this you can see uh, the red image view has an ID called as image view 2 and the yellow image view has an ID called as image view 1 and uh, the green uh, light has an ID called as image view 3 so these are all uh, automatically generated IDs and they are not so user friendly so we are going to rename these IDs uh, which are a little bit uh, friendlier so I'm going to click on uh, the red uh, image view, the, the image view with the red light image and I'm going to rename this and I'm going to rename this to red underscore light so uh, I get a dialog whether you, I want to update all the references just click on don't do not show again and click S okay and uh, you get this rename resource dialog and you'll have to click on S okay so now we're going to rename the other two image views as well this will be renamed as yellow light and I'm going to rename this as green light so that is it so we have three image views and the UI is not completed uh, you also should remember we had three buttons at the bottom of the screen so we'll use those buttons to turn the lights on and off I'm going to click on form widgets so the form widgets has uh, buttons so I'm going to drag a button to the screen okay so we need three buttons so I'm going to drag the second button to the center of the screen and the last button to the right of the screen when you're dragging these components around you can actually see the guides which are really very helpful uh, when you're uh, dragging and dropping uh, UIs UI components to your uh, screen but there are at times where you need uh, you'll need a greater control over the user interface in which I would uh, ask you to go to do some XML XML is good uh, it gives you greater control over your user interfaces uh, and I prefer uh, XML to the graphical layout editor now we have three buttons and uh, we need to reference these buttons from the Java code as well so we are going to rename it uh, before we are going to give them IDs we will have to look at the text you know that text uh, by default says button but it should say the color of the light so I'm going to click on the text property and I'm going to rename this to red and the second button to yellow the third button will read green Uh, you will also notice that the color on the uh, buttons the text color on the buttons are white which is not uh, looking good so we're going to change the color of the text for each and every button so when you scroll down on the property sheet you now there is a attribute called as text color I'm going to change uh, give this a color I'm going to enter a hexa value for black which is hash ff double zero double zero double zero you're going to copy this code because uh, we need to change the color for the remaining buttons as well 
So we're going to change the color for the yellow button, the text color for the yellow button. I'm going to double click on this to press on delete, right click and paste. And now we're going to change the color of the text on the green button. Now we have changed the color of the text on the buttons and now it is time to give them IDs as well. So let's uh, change the IDs of these buttons. This is named as button 1. We'll rename it as red button. Click OK. And we're going to rename this as yellow button. And this button will be renamed as green button. So this is the completed UI that we are going to use with our uh, project. Uh, you saw how we added new views onto the screen and you also saw how to uh, change the properties of those uh, views. We will be using this layout in our project and uh, we'll write some Java code to make this functional in the ne next video. Thank you.